When my first book came out, a lot of my friends teased me and said that it should really have been called the Rhubarb Pea and Marsala Cookbook. And I am beginning to think that this series should be called the Lemon Chili and Mint Show. But I'm not apologising for that. I mean, restaurant chefs have to dazzle us with their novelty. But at home, cooking with familiar ingredients is what it's all about. And anyway, there is another reason why this particular programme is so heavily sprinkled with mint. For me, just the smell of it instantly evokes hot-shouldered summer. It's just not a one-note herb. I mean, yes, it's pungent, but it's also so refreshing. And it's peppery, but it's sweet, and I love that combination. And I use mint, untraditionally, I admit, in my version of a gimlet, which should be vodka or gin and lime cordial. But I like fresh lime, oh, summer sharpness, a bit of sugar, and then, this is the bit I like, mint in, a few leaves. <laughs> Fish it about to get all the flavour. And this is called muddling when a bartender does it, although admittedly he doesn't use a rolling pin. But um, I do not have any specialist tools for the job. A bit of water. Fizzy water. Just a bit, just summer spritz. And ice. Mmm. That's what I needed. I make this squid salad such a lot, and one of the things that draws me to it is the deeply green herb-rich dressing. I've got mint and coriander there, and I'm going to add a little parsley, and to this lovely bed of deep, deep green, a lime, whole lime, and it really adds something, the whole fruit, because you get all the juiciness of the pulp as well, so not just the sharpness, but also a bit of bit of body. Garlic clove, which I'm going to snip a bit to make the chopping easier. Little green chilli, just for a bit of heat. Some fish sauce. I love the sharpness of lime, but I adore the saltiness of fish sauce. And a sprinkle, about a teaspoon of sugar, just to counter the saltiness and sharpness of the dressing so far. Also, I think it brings out the flavour of the herbs. My mother always put sugar in mint sauce, so it reminds me of that. On to Blitz. And then some ground nut or any vegetable oil. Ground nut oil becomes a wonderful carrier for the herbs, the garlic, the lime in the dressing. Perfect. It is so deeply, intensely green. It's like liquid snooker bays. Look at this. Well, that's the dressing. Now the squid. Baby squid, really tender. Which I've cut into rings and I'm going to quick fry until the rings turn sort of pale pink. Really, it just needs a couple of minutes. I love how the white of the squid takes on the palest of pinks and those crowns of tentacles curling up so deeply pinkly. Mm. And that looks about it. I'm going to decant into a bowl. Sprinkle some salt over these. I'm just going to put the squid there just to cool a bit while I get on with a salad, which is nothing more laborious than arranging a few salad leaves. I mean, there's rocket here, but you could use a packet of designer leaves from the supermarket. And on to these lovely bits of straggly green. I'm going to add some red onion that's cut into thin red-tipped half-moons. 
and strew on top. Yeah. And now, just want to work some of the fabulous green dressing through my pink and white squid. The thing about squid when it's this tender is that it's fabulous and melting in texture, but it tends not to be very pronounced in taste, and so it absorbs this pungent, herby background perfectly. Now, just adorn the top of your beautiful salad with these. Look at these pink crowns of tentacles. I think I'm just going to spoon just a little bit of the dressing over the leaves. I love this so much. And that is it. Mm. I'm going to have some now. Mm. Lovely. Some food combinations are so perfect that you can't imagine anyone ever needing to invent them. I mean, think of tomatoes and basil, or lamb with rosemary. And for me, there is mm, mint with sheep or goat's cheese. There's just something about the peppery coolness of mint against the salty tang of halloumi or feta, or sharp and creamy chev that just makes me drool. These flavours work so well in this simple summer salad with halloumi. First, in an oilless pan, fry slices of halloumi until slightly scorched and golden. Then make up a simple oil and lemon dressing and sprinkle in some chopped mint. Finally, drizzle the mint speckled dressing over some crunchy salad leaves topped with the halloumi slices. This Corsican omelette combines soft goat's cheese and fresh mint. Lightly fry some chopped mint in butter before pouring in some beaten eggs. Crumble in the creamy chef. The salty sharpness of the cheese again contrasts wonderfully with the fresh hit of the mint. Sprinkle with a final topping of mint and dive in. There is just something about the marriage of sharp, sharp cheese and fresh mint that really works. And here, they're the baseline for my courgette fritters. And I know the word fritters really conjures up this complex world of deep frying and dense eating, but these are really light vegetable patties that are crispy and juicy at the same time. I mean, perfect. There are just four courgettes providing this amount of grated matter. I want to get as much liquid out of these courgettes as possible, which is why I'm strewing them over this jauntily nautical tea towel. Swaddle these little babies. And bung them out of the way while I get some other ingredients out of the fridge. Eggs, spring onions, feta. My salty, sharp cheese of choice here. Okay, so finely chop the spring onions, bunch of them, four or five, that sort of thing. Put them in here. And these are wonderfully herby little patties. And my herbs of choice today, mint and parsley. Oh. Again, finely chopped. lovely summer garden here. Yeah, the funny thing is people are so kind of foolishly and smugly snobbish about dried herbs, but dried herbs can be wonderful and interestingly they provide something very different from their fresh counterpart. For example, fresh mint I think brings coolness, whereas dried mint brings warmth and I want that here. So a sprinkle of dried mint to compound the heavenliness of the fresh mint. Want some paprika, 
not just because I love its sweet heat, but also because I want the reddish gold tinge it brings to these lovely green and white crispy cakes. Oh, look at that. About 140 grams, 150, a cupful of plain flour, three eggs, wonderful hit of sunshine here. So into this golden batter, dense, salty, crumbly feta. And finally, these beautiful dark tip jade strands of courgette. Everything's juicily combined with these lovely strands hanging out. I just need to put the pan on the heat, some olive oil in it, and dollop them in and fry them. Real home cooking so often starts with leftovers and for me the ultimate leftover is cold chicken. I mean, my mother took this to ridiculous extremes which I have a great sympathy with which is to say whenever we had chicken for lunch she'd roast two chickens, one for us to eat hot and another just to be put in the fridge cold for picking at. And uh, I was looking through my grandmother, my maternal grandmother's recipe folder the other day and I came across her recipe for coronation chicken, which I remember very, very fondly. And she always put mango chutney in hers. And although I wanted to rework it entirely and have, I wanted to keep the idea of the mango, but I've used instead fresh mango, which works incredibly well. But of course, given the year of its birth, I couldn't anymore call it coronation chicken, but instead, please forgive me, golden jubilee chicken. need to start off with some chopped mango and this is the way I think it's easiest to cube a mango. Okay so just cut round not deeply just to get through the skin and then <laughs> flay the mango which is to say just pull the skin off. It's no bad thing if you get the slightly underripe mango which is just as well because that's how they're sold mostly. Peel off, cut down and then across, and I'm sure this is incredibly dangerous, but I like living dangerously. I just cut against the stone so the cubes fall out. And then it's exactly the same for the other side. Now I love the sweetness of the mango. There's something very old fashioned about having the sweet fruit with chicken, but on, with it, I want heat. I want to temper it slightly. So a lovely juicy red chilli, it's going to be easier with this actually. Clumsily de-seeded and finely chopped. Now to spruce up the savouriness a bit more, a spring onion, just finely sliced. Oh, lovely red and green together. And add these to the mango cubes. Now, some lime juice, very important because although I love the sweetness and the hotness, sourness brings everything to life. The squeeze in. Mm. Starting off as one, you can always add another lime at the end when everything's assembled. So this really is the basis of the salad and its dressing. And then, final little bit of chopping, this cooked chicken breast. I like it in chunks here. Mm. I love the tender whiteness of the flesh against all that seared outside. And some lettuce, whatever you like. I like the little gem here. I know you're never meant to cut lettuce, but I want this really finely 
shredded, so it's almost like a herb rather than a leaf. And for wonderful pungency and earthiness, because I think the lovely thing about the blandness of chicken, if you like, is that it really can carry other flavors. Some coriander. And all this really zings. So, dust, tumble, this into this. Mix well. Ah, fabulous sort of 50s day glow colours. Now, a little oil, when I say a little, I mean little, about a teaspoon. This is groundnut oil, flavourless and light. Teeny bit, drop or two of sesame oil. Sprinkling of salt. Mix everything together. This is lovely, sprightly summer salad, whenever you eat it. Dust a can onto a plate for this tumbling out. Ah, lovely. And a bit more coriander, I think. Mmm. Perfect summer salad whenever you eat it. Another fabulous low effort chicken salad is this one with parsley and almonds. Throw some roughly shredded chicken into a tangle of unchopped flat leaf parsley and toss together. Toast some flaked almonds and scatter over the salad, along with a generous sprinkle of mould and salt. And that's it. Your work is done. Just eat. My Caesar Cleopatra is a twist on a classic Caesar salad. Make the dressing simply by whisking lemon juice, oil and grated parmesan into an egg yolk and pour oozily over some cos lettuce. Toss with chunks of cold chicken and avocado and give a final grating of parmesan. I've always associated that American cocktail, a mint julep, with the deepest heat of midsummer. I suppose that's because at a formative age, I read The Great Gatsby, and in it there is this pivotal scene when they're all sitting around, deranged in the airless heat, drinking mint juleps before, you know, everything happens. And I've used the ingredients for mint julep to mint and bourbon whiskey to form a syrup for poaching peaches in, which is fabulous for giving deep southern heat to unseasonable fruit. I'm just gonna turn this gorgeously aromatic syrup down to simmer and then the peaches that are to be poached in that syrup can be cut. I wouldn't normally advise cooking fruit because fresh fruit is fabulous but it's not very often even the height of summer that you can get a peach you can really sink your teeth into and there's something about poaching peaches that just seems to restore to even resistant and firm flesh all the lusciousness which is due to the peachy estate. If the peaches are at all unripe, and odds on they will be, then it's much easier to remove the stones after they've poached for a while in the pan than it is to do it now. The reason I choose white fleshed rather than yellow fleshed peaches is straightforward. They're more beautiful. I mean, look at this lovely pale flesh and that rosy blush around the rim. And the lovely thing is, when the peaches have been poached and you just slip off the skins, all that beautiful pink-red glow will have transferred onto the pale flesh. They're like fairy tale peaches. So cut side down, in they go.
So the peaches are in. Now there's a reason why I use bourbon. Well, obviously it's because it's the key ingredient in a mint julep. But also, I just love the rounded spiciness of bourbon, which scotch doesn't quite have. But if you've only got scotch in the house, that's fine. Not red wine, simply because that would stain them and dye them. And you'd lose all that beautiful paleness. I love the way the peaches seem to ooze their pinkness into the syrup, and then the syrup oozes back its bourbon spiciness, and it works perfectly. You don't need to make this up from scratch every time. You can let this cool after you've used it, and then freeze it, and then next time you want to make these, you've already got your syrup there. But I have to say, a really fabulous way of using this up is to boil it down so you have an intensely peachy bourbon syrup, and then pour it hot over cold, cold vanilla ice cream. Mm. I'm going to turn these over now, and you'll see why I cook them cut side down first, because now they're cut side up, which means when I want to test them to see whether they're ready, which I do in a very primitive fashion by spearing with a fork, it means at least I'm not going to mar their blushing, humpbacked beauty. When they're cooked, they should feel tender but not flabby, and it's hard to be precise to say exactly how long this will take. When they're on the cusp of ripeness, maybe a minute or so each side should do it, but when they're really firm and underripe, well, you could go as far as four minutes aside. So, just take these lovely little babies out. Ah, oh, like fairy tale peaches. What I love about poaching peaches like this is that you get that hit of intensely fruity midsummer whenever you want, because you can buy peaches really all the year round. And since this takes all the wintriness out of them, it's fabulous. Summer restored. So let these cool a bit before I start manhandling them. And what I want in the syrup is for it to be even more intense. So this means hiving off some, about 200 millilitres, into another pan. Add a splosh more bourbon. And then let this bubble away, getting deeper in taste and colour and thicker. And then when this is cooled, you can pour it over the beautiful skinned peaches, dot with roughly torn up mint, and just eat and taste the whole of summer. Mm -hmm.